type of orthonormalization we need here can be constructed by what is called the Gram-Schmidt process. Okay. It can be constructed by the Gram-Schmidt uh, method, I guess. Okay, and what this does is it lets us start out with a linearly independent set of eigenvectors, which would, which may be the ones that you originally solved for by solving that uh, generalized eigenvalue problem, okay? So this is a linearly independent set. Okay? Why do we know that the eigenvectors that we get by solving that generalized eigenvalue problem are going to be linearly independent? Right, it's because K and M are both positive definite. See, that's what guarantees the existence of linearly independent eigenvectors, right? In some situations, we may have repeated eigenvalues, uh, in which case the eigenvectors are not uniquely defined, but nevertheless, they can be picked to be linearly independent, right? Okay, so, uh, so we, we are assured of linearly independent eigenvectors, phi, and the Gram-Schmidt process GS as short for Gram-Schmidt, essentially takes us to a set psi sub M right, which are now M orthonormal as we have defined. This is a completely standard process uh, procedure that is available in many uh, books on linear algebra or, or sometimes even books on uh, partial differential equations because the method does exist to, does extend even to uh, continuous eigenfunctions. All right, so, so we have that. Well, um, what does that then say for our, uh, for, for, for our problem, okay? Note that, um, what this tells us is the following, right? So now, because we have the set psi m, we can construct the following sort of a product, right? Supposing we take m times m acting on psi k, and we dot it from the left with psi m, okay? Right? Now, Okay, and then we also have a lambda k here, okay? The reason we have a lambda k is because I started out by writing m psi k, okay? So what we get on the right-hand side is psi m dot k psi k. All right. Okay. When we get, when we look at this sort of product, now what we observe is that because we have this M orthonormal property for our uh, orthonormalized set of eigenvectors, we have here lambda k delta M k, right, on the, on the left hand side. Okay. And here on the right-hand side, we have now a result for forming this sort of quadratic product between psi m, k, and psi k, okay? So, alternately, what this implies for us is that if we form, just as we form for psi m a product, if we do the same thing for, if we do the same thing with, by, by using k, in it, right? 
right this is equal to lambda n okay we get lambda n because of the fact that we have this Kronecker delta product acting here all right so we have this additional property okay all right okay so with this background in hand let us now move on to trying to understand how we analyze this uh, how we apply to analyze our problem okay um, in order to proceed there let us uh, first use a, another property that is given to us by this orthonormalization now because we started out with a set of linearly independent vectors phi m okay and we proceeded to orthonormalize them we also know that this set is linearly independent okay therefore it spans the space that we are working in okay so let's state that all right now uh, the set psi m n equals 1 to n df forms a basis in R N D F. Okay. What that means then is that any vector okay say D right any vector D can be written as uh, sum over M running from 1 to NDF of D sub M psi sub M okay we have this expansion of D in the basis okay all right okay and now if we ask well how do we compute this how do we compute such a, a representation we can compute such a representation if we have the dms okay and in order to know what those dms are we observe that we can simply multiply this uh, equation from the left by uh, our matrix m okay so to get the coefficients d sub m okay what we do is that we first of all construct m d equals sum m equals 1 to n d f d m m psi m okay just using linearity all right okay now once we have this we can now dot this vector equation on the left by psi k right our eigenvalue okay and we can do the same out here okay now using the linearity of the dot product what we get is the following okay what we get on the right hand side is sum m equals 1 to ndf dm psi k dot m psi m all right but then what is this this is just delta km where did that come from from the fact that we've constructed 
the psi m's, that entire set of psi's, to be m orthonormal, okay? But then this explicitly when we compute the sum knowing the delta km is the Kronecker delta, we get d sub k, all right? So here we have a definition for what our coefficients are. These coefficients dk are uniquely defined, okay? And therefore this expansion, right, of d in terms of its, of that basis is also unique, okay? So let me just write a few comments about this, uh, about this decomposition, okay? So when we say that d can be written as sum over m going from 1 to n d f d sub m psi sub m, this is what we mean by the modal decomposition of d. Okay, each psi m is what we will call a mode, right? So psi m is the mth mode, okay? And then d sub m is the corresponding modal coefficient of d, okay? And because we have a uh, representation for d, for, for the dms or the dks in general as we derived on the previous slide, this representation, okay? What is this representation? It is that dm, let me get rid of this because it may look like a minus sign. The dm, uh, the dms are defined as psi m dotted with nd, okay? So we have a unique representation for the dms, okay? All right, uh, we are going to end this um, segment here. Thanks.